Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Colossians chapter 1. I'll be reading verses 22 and verse 23. Colossians chapter 1, verses 22 and verse 23. Isn't the Lord good? Amen. I just enjoyed the service so much this morning. Enjoyed the testimony uh, or testimonies that uh, people had today. And just the answer to prayer, God is so good. All right, let's, let's read Colossians chapter 1, verse 22 and verse 23. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. <coughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Father, we come into thy presence tonight, and what a privilege that is. Lord, we come boldly to the throne of grace by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we are thankful for the answer of prayer. And Lord, we ask you for these on the prayer list, Lord, there's such great needs. We pray that you will just heal those who need healing and help those who are in spiritual need and bless those, Lord, in various ways that need your blessings. Hear our prayers. We pray for revival for America. Lord, we just pray that uh, you would just help people to turn back to God. Turn back to your word and live for you. Help us all that we can humble ourselves before you. If there's any sin in our life, help us to repent of it. To get it right with you and live for you. Now bless this service tonight. We pray in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. I want to preach on the subject presented wholly to the Lord. There's a beautiful picture of a bride presented to her husband in the book of Esther. King Ahuzerus set the coronation of Queen Esther. He made a great feast in her honor. He called all the uh, important people, very important people of his kingdom together. And he presented many gifts in her honor. This was Esther's coronation. This was the day the king presented his queen. However, before Esther became queen, she had to prove herself. There were things that she had to go through. She had to prove herself worthy to be the queen. She had to win, she had to win the king's favor. She was an orphan, as we all know, raised by her cousin Malachi. Or Mordecai, excuse me, not Malachi, Mordecai. She was brought to the king's house where she went through a period of purification. There was two periods of six months that she had to go through in order to be presented to the king. And she had, as I said a moment ago, had to win his favor. And over af only after obtaining the king's grace did she become his queen. You know, the Bible presents a similar picture of the church. The Bible tells us that Jesus is going to come for his church. We're all going to go to heaven. We're going to live with him eternally if we're saved and if we know the Lord is our personal Savior. But he's going to present to himself his church. But there's a time of proving, and we're in that time of proving today, there has to be a time that, like Esther, had to, be, had to win the favor of King Ahuzerus. The church today is to win the grace, to win the favor of God, the grace of God. We will be a part of that, of that great meeting if we follow the Lord. Let me ask you tonight, are you following the Lord? Are you living for Jesus Christ every day? Are you giving Him your whole life? And is your whole life about Jesus Christ and His kingdom? First of all, we will be presented pure and holy before Jesus Christ if we continue in the faith. 
Colossians chapter 1 here, verse 22 and 23. In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight, if you continue in the faith. Let me stop and point out the, 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 the conditional word here in this text, the conjunction showing condition, this little word if, it's such a small word, just two letters, but it has such great meaning. Paul makes this very clear. We will be presented before Christ if we do three things. First of all, if we continue. Folks, when we get saved and we give our heart to the Lord, we say to him, Lord, if you will be my God, if you will forgive me of my sin and, and, and save me from all my sins and save me from a life of sin, if you will save me, I will follow you. And so that means that when we get saved, we pledge to the Lord that we're going to continue in his word. We're going to live for him. The second thing is if we remain grounded in the truth. We are going to live as God wants us to live. We're not going to be blown about with every wind of doctrine and every, every different idea that comes along. We're going to keep our eyes on the Lord. We're going to follow God's word and we're going to live the way God wants us to live. We give our, when we get saved, we give ourselves to him. <coughs> and if we are not moved away from the hope of the gospel, what he's talking about here is faithfulness. It's required of stewards that a man be found faithful. God is looking for fruit from, from people who, who know him. Uh, God is looking for people who love him and who serve him, that he means more to them than anything else. And folks, we're here to cherry in church tonight because we want to be here. We're, we're following the Lord. We read our Bible. We live according to God's word because we want to, because we love the Lord and we want to be faithful to him. We want to bring glory to him. It's a requirement that once a person is saved, he continue in the faith. The Bible has a lot of warnings. Have you ever noticed that? You know, the Bible has a lot of warnings about staying, staying on the right road, not getting away from God. The Bible has a lot of warnings not to fall back into sin. You know, in Matthew 13, Jesus gave four types of people who receive the word, who receive the gospel. First of all, those by, by the wayside. There are some people who, you know, who just refuse to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those by the wayside, a fellow were like, like sowing seed on the side of the road, you know it's not going to take root, you know it's not going to grow. There are people who just refuse to accept Christ, they refuse to hear the word of God, they don't want to be saved. Now, I don't understand that. Amen? Amen? I have never been able to figure out why anyone doesn't want to be saved. I have never been able to figure out why anyone would not want to give their life to Jesus Christ. I've been serving him since I was 14 years old. I've never seen anything in the Bible. I've never found anything in Christ that, uh, that I was not pleased with. God is good. Amen. But there are people who refuse to even hear the gospel. Jesus talked about people in stony places who receive the seed but fall away because of tribulation. Some people start out, they accept, they accept the Lord and, and they start out and they do it for a while, they live for a little while for the Lord, but when tribulation comes along, you know, they're, they're happy to be a Christian as long as things go smooth and easy for them. They're happy to be a Christian, but when tribulation comes along and they, come, and they run into some problems and things, they, they, they're not willing to sacrifice for Jesus Christ. That won't work. That won't work. There's different kinds of people. There are those among the seed that, was, that fell among the thorns. And it's, Jesus explained that those are people who receive the gospel. They, they live for the Lord. But the cares of this world choke their desire to serve the Lord 
out. I think a lot of people fall into that area. I see a lot of people start out for the Lord and, and, and they do pretty good for sometimes quite a while. But, you know, the, the devil's always out there with a the temptation, isn't he? He's always trying to pull us away from Jesus. He's always trying to pull us away from the church. He's always trying to pull us back out into the old life, out into sin. And sometimes, you know, I've watched, I've watched see, seeds in the field. I've watched beans grow and corn grow. I was raised on a farm. And I've seen the cuckleberries and I've seen the morning glories and I've seen the other things come up around them and actually choke out, choke out either the beans or the corn or whatever it is. That's the way sin works in people's lives. If you allow sin to stay there it's going to choke the gospel out amen. but there's the good ground amen? amen that brings forth fruit some 30 some 60 some 100 fold people who love the Lord people who have their eyes on Jesus people who continue Say continue. continue. You see, that's what it takes. We get saved and we begin to live for the Lord and we keep our eyes on Jesus and we continue to live for the Lord. Listen to me. No matter what. I want to be a Christian if things are good or if things are bad. I want to be strong enough to follow the Lord. If I run into tribulation or trials or, or persecutions or whatever I run into, I want to be strong enough in the Lord to follow Him no matter what. Say no matter what. No matter what. See, some people just want to be a Christian if, good, if, things, if it's good. But we need to be a Christian. We just need to trust God. Amen? Amen. A lot, you know, faith is about trusting God. I've preached on that many times. A big part of our faith is not just asking God, you know, and, and receiving from the Lord. But a big part of our faith is just learning to pray and trust God and to follow Jesus Christ no matter what. Because let me tell you, following Jesus Christ is always right. Not nine times out of ten. Not nine and a half times out of ten. Following Jesus Christ is right ten times out of ten. Every time. God will never leave you, never forsake you. You know, the Bible teaches that be, to be presented before the Lord, we must continue in the faith. I see so many people who make a profession, who claim to be born again, but they don't. Can you, I, I don't believe there is any good reason to quit on Jesus. Amen. I, got, I got hurt. I've seen people who wouldn't go to church. All my, all my ministry, I've, I've dealt with people, whether it be in Missouri or Indiana, wherever I have been, I've run into people who wouldn't go to church anymore. Used to. And I've asked them, why, why, why don't you come out to church? We, we would love to have you. We would like to have you in the congregation. It'd just thrill us if you'd come and be with us in church. No, 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 I got hurt. Why that certain, certain person down there or those people down there? I wouldn't, I, I, or I, well, you, well, why don't you go to another church? No, 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 I got hurt. Jesus got hurt on the cross. Amen. And he didn't quit. He purchased our salvation. And he was there on that cross to stay there and to pay the price for our sin no matter what the devil did to him. Don't we owe him something? If you continue. See, the Lord is... I, I don't believe the Lord's coming for a bunch of quitters. Amen? Amen? Tried and faithful and true. Jesus Christ is going to return for a wonderful church, a beautiful church. People who love him and who follow him no matter what. You say, well, I've seen too much hypocrisy. I've talked with people like that. 
I've just seen too much hypocrisy. It's amazing people always look at the Judas, isn't it? And they never look at the rest of the apostles. Jesus, when he was on the cross, could have said, well, you know, Judas quit on me. Judas betrayed me with a kiss. I'm not going to hang on this cross anymore. I'm not, I'm not going to pay the price for lost people anymore because I had one, I had one in my own, uh, my own disciples. He was a hypocrite. He was a hypocrite of all hypocrites. Jesus died for people who want to be saved. For God so loved the world. They gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I have a close friend. Started out for the Lord. Did good for a while. But he's not in church tonight. I don't know if he would even profess. I don't even like to think of that. He ran into some problems in his life. I know, I know he ran into some problems in his life. My friend, let me tell you something. Life is full of problems. Amen. That's why we have Jesus. Amen. 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 Let me tell you don't, you, don't you get in a situation and say life didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. Don't you get in a situation and say life is too hard. Don't you get in a situation and say God can't expect this of me. Let me tell you something. The, the life is full of problems. That's why we have Jesus. Continue in the Word. Say continue. continue. Praise God. Continue to follow the Lord no matter what. I go back to some of the churches once in a great while. I get an opportunity to go back to some of the churches that the church that I saved in. Some of the other churches I've pastored. Uh, some years ago I pastored a little congregational Christian church in, in uh, southern Illinois. And Sister Noyes and I had an opportunity to go back there, preach the sermon there. You know, one of my greatest blessings was to see old acquaintances that had been there, that was there when I preached there, when I was their pastor there, and went back and they were still there and still on, still on the firing line, still serving God. Hallelujah! Amen. The second point I have is, we will be presented pure and holy before Jesus Christ if we remain grounded and settled in the faith. Verse 22 says, In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. God's going to clean us, clean us up. You know that? Amen? Amen. If we let him. God doesn't make you do things. God didn't make me answer the call. I fought the call to preach six years. God could have, he could have reached down and got a hammerlock on me, sent a lightning bolt, sent a storm. He could have done whatever he wanted to. It was the still, small voice that said, I love you, I love you, and I still love you. That's what got me. And it's the, it's the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit that still leads me. It says, Frank, you don't need this in your life. God's not pleased with it. God wants to clean your life up. But we see, God wants to change. Folks, let me tell you something. God wants to, he saved, listen, he saved us to change us. But we have to let him change us. We have to listen to the Holy Spirit. We have to listen to the word of God. We have to let God change our life. Amen? Amen. You see, look at these words. In the body of his flesh, talking about Jesus, through death, to present you holy. Everybody say holy. 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 Say it again. Holy. holy. One more time. Holy. holy. It's not a bad word. It's a good <coughs> word. Amen? It's a good word. God wants you and me. 
God wants us. That sounds better, don't it? God wants us to be holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy, the scripture says. And folks, let me tell you something. For me to be holy, I have to change. For you to be holy, you have to change. We are all sinners. Sinning sinners are not holy. We are all, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us. And when we get saved, God wants to change us. And as long as we put the brakes on and we won't let him change us, we cannot be holy. That's what the Holy Spirit's job is. What, you know, what's his name? Isn't it holy? Amen. God sends his Holy Spirit in our heart to change us so we can be holy. Are you holy? Are you changing? Unblameable. God wants you to live free of sin. Oh, preacher, come on. I know that we sin. I understand that we make mistakes. God knows that we make mistakes. We make mistakes. We can't use that as an excuse. He wants us, to, he wants us here to be unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. God wants to change us. I didn't mean to preach all that long on that, but I did, and I'm glad I did. I'd rather preach on what the Holy Spirit leads me to preach than what I'm thinking about preaching anyway. But he said, if ye continue in the faith, if ye continue. A lot of people just read right across that. Better stop and read these little words. You can go to heaven if you're saved. You can go to heaven if you're saved. Amen. Oh, you're catching on. You see, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, wherefore I, Paul, am made a minister. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when we're presented before the Lord? Can you just visualize being with all of God's people People who've been saved, people who've surrendered their heart to the Lord, missionaries, great preachers, housewives, farmers, who love the Lord with all their heart. Wow, what a meeting. I, you hear me talk about the gospel thing that we go on. And I like to go because... I like to do nothing better than most anybody. And I can just get on that boat and I can just lean back and watch the water go by and if I want to, I can put my mind in neutral, which it is most of the time anyway. <laughs> but I can just lean back and do nothing. Woo, that's good. I can go listen to the, to the gospel, the message of the gospel, singers. I can go hear... People preach the King James Bible. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. That's good. You know why? Because you get on that boat with Christian people. Now, I'm sure there's some folks on there that maybe not saved, who say they're saved. I'm sure there's some folks on there probably that, <clears throat> I don't know, you know, but not very many. Because... Saved people like to go worship the Lord. And that's, besides the gospel preaching, besides the gospel singing, besides the doing nothing, besides all the eating, <laughs> I just like to be with God's people. I mean, you meet this stranger from halfway around the world. 
and you can talk to them about Jesus, and, and, they, and, a, and a light comes in their eyes. That's good stuff. What's it going to be when the Lord presents His church to Himself? Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 26. This is one of my favorite portions of Scripture. You say, preacher, you say that about every Scripture. Amen. Well, it is. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, 26 and 27. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy. Say holy. 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 And without blemish. You know, when we get to heaven, then it's going to be worth it all. You know, it's, it's you know, but to be presented to the Lord, we, we must be grounded and settled. There is so much confusion today. So much shallow Christianity. So much worldliness among God's people. So much carnality. You know, I often wonder, you probably heard me say this before. I often wonder what would happen if the Apostle Paul would walk in to our churches today. You think he'd be happy? Well, I think, I think he'd have a holy fit. And I think the one, thing, one of the things he'd preach on more than anything else is holiness. He'd say, you've got to get rid of all this worldliness. You've got to get rid of all this carnality. Let me tell you, the Lord has called you to be saved people. The Lord's called you to be a peculiar people. The Lord wants you to be different from the world. You've got to give your life to Jesus, and you've got to live for him. Why don't we do it? That'd be a good experiment to try to live as holy as you can for one week. Maybe just for one day. Amen? To give it all to Jesus just for one day. You know what I think? I think we'd like it. I think God would bless us for that. There's so much, folks, it grieves my heart so much that there's so much worldliness in churches. You see, to be grounded and settled means to be unmovable. In 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Jesus said we should be like a house built upon a rock. Unmovable, in our faith in Christ. There's a couple of things I have settled in my heart. Number one, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. He's Lord. He's the Son of God. He's God the Son of God. In eternity, He is the Word of God. When He came to earth, He became the first begotten Son of God. Amen. Amen. He is eternal. What are you going to find better than him? Why are people going around studying other religions? We've got the truth. Amen. I've got that settled in my heart. Now I'll talk to other people. I'll talk to people of other religions. I will respect them in so far that as I possibly can. But listen, it's settled in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. And it's settled in my heart that the Bible is the Word of God. Amen. I'm not interested in doubting it. I've had all that. I've had it preached at me. I've had it taught to me. I've gone through it. I, I've, had, I've had all kinds of people say, you know, this verse and that verse and so on and so forth. I'm not interested in that. God called me to believe it. Amen. Unmovable in our faith in Christ. Unmovable in our belief in God's Word. Unmovable in our doctrine. You know, to see people grounded and settled is such a blessing. I see some of you folks. I, I, I grew up with great saints of God 
older people that set an example for me. Mm, that's good. I think of their lives so many times. The old songs that we sing. The choir. I, I used to sing in the choir when I was about 14, 15. Well, you know, 14, 15, 16 years old. I sang in the choir in our home, little country church. I got to sing next to Sister Mary and led better. I'll never forget that. What a beautiful voice. So many times we just, we just sung in that choir. And I think of that so many times. And I think of Brother Royal Duckworth. And I think of Brother Heron Gaylord. And I think of, I think of some of the preachers. I think of my, my pastor. I think of Brother Corlew dying. I, I, I told you, I told the folks in, in prayer, uh, our prayer group this morning, uh, my brother was talking to him. He's, he, he's in a hospital. 96 years old, and up until about a month ago, they was coming and getting him, taking him to church in a wheelchair, and he was preaching to a congregation out of a wheelchair. Amen? Amen. And they thought he was going to die. And so my brother went to see him, and he was talking to him, and he said, yeah, he said, you know, he said, I just, I've been praying. I'm just praying the Lord take me on home. But he said, there's other people praying I get better. And he said, and he's gotten a little better now. He said, I guess I lost. <laughs> he's not worried about dying. He's on his way to heaven. Amen. Determined. It's just great. To, isn't it great to see people who have the love of God in their heart? Isn't it great to see people who rejoice in the Lord? Isn't it great to see people who are unmovable? Isn't it great to see people who know Jesus Christ as the Son of God and know the Bible is the Word of God and love to live for Jesus? We're going to go to heaven and be with them for eternity. Well, let me give you the last point. We will be presented pure and holy. I'm hearing a thump up there. It may be hailing. But I don't have a new car. Some of you do. <laughs> Some of you too worldly. <laughs> All right, settle down. <laughs> uh, Uh, quit it. <laughs> Amen. We will be presented pure and holy before Jesus Christ if we're not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Verse 22 and 23, In the body of His flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and, unre and unreprovable in His sight if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Wherefore I, Paul, am made a minister. You see, there are three things Paul tells us we must continue in the faith. Don't quit. You don't give in. You don't give out. And you don't give up. When you serve Jesus. Amen. You say preacher how in the world. You don't give in. You don't give up. You don't give up. Because we have Jesus folks. Amen. We can just keep going. Because no matter what the devil. Listen Job found out. No matter what the devil does to you. God is right there with you. It may not feel like it sometimes. You may wonder where he is. But let me tell you. God said to the devil. Do whatever you want to to him. But don't you touch his life. Amen. God was right there. He knew what Job could take. He knew how bad it was going to hurt Job. But he knew Job loved him and he could take it. Hallelujah. I hope he knows that about us. Amen. Don't be moved away. We must remain. We must remain. This thing about serving the Lord is serious business. We're on our way to heaven. We're going to live eternally with the Lord. Jesus Christ died on the cross and, and shed his blood for our salvation. That's serious stuff. Amen. You get saved. And you walk with the Lord. You get grounded in the truth. And you continue to walk with the Lord. And bad things happen. I know bad things happen. 
You go through some deep valleys, and sometimes the valleys get so long and so hard. I've seen people go through them. I've been through a few myself, but I've seen other people go through so much more than what I've had to go through. I look at, I look at people in other countries that, that are separated from their families tonight because all, all they did was just love Jesus. But they're grounded. They don't quit. Amen? Amen? There's too much of this quitting stuff going on. There's too much of this stuff that, you know, I've got this to do and I've got that to do. That's not being grounded. That's being moved about, blown about with every wind that comes along. Let me tell you, you get in Jesus, you stay in Jesus, you live in Jesus, no matter what. Amen. Don't you let the devil get you out of church. Don't you let the devil get you out of church. Amen. Everybody else quit, you stay. We must not allow ourselves to be moved. Whatever it takes to remain faithful to the Lord is what it takes. We owe Him everything. We don't owe Him half our life. I'm just about tired. I tell you what, and I love people. All the whining. All the whining that's going on. I, I'm a pretty good whiner myself. I do my share of it, and I'm ashamed of it when I do. It's hard. Oh, preacher, you, you don't understand what I'm going through. It's so hard. It's just so hard, preacher. I know it. I'm praying for you and a lot of other people are praying for you. I hope, if, I hope when I go through things that's hard, you'll pray for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't know what I'll go through tomorrow. Don't know what God will call on me to go through. It may be hard. But I have Him. Amen. And I have you. Amen. Amen. You see... We don't need to be whiners. God loves us. He asked some, he asked some of his children to go through some things that he don't ask some of his other children to go through. You know why? Because he knows our heart. He knows who can take it and who can't. What's it going to take for you to live for Jesus? To go all out for Jesus? To be grounded and settled in the truth? Not to be moved away from the hope of the gospel? It may take everything every one of us has got. I'm scared for our country. I'm afraid freedom could be gone. And I'm as serious as, I'm just as serious as if I was at a funeral preaching a dead man's funeral. I'm as serious, I'm scared for our freedom. But if it does, we'll live for Jesus. Heaven is for overcomers. Now you hear me. Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. God said that to all seven churches in the book of Revelation. He that overcometh. Say that with me. He that overcometh. We must keep our eyes on Jesus and our heart's desire must be to go to heaven. I've seen people go through things. I'm going to tell you something. The devil will do his worst. There's things that every one of us here are going to face as we walk the Jesus road. And let me tell you, the Jesus road is always uphill. You, if you're looking for something easy, you wait, to get to, you wait till you get to heaven. That's where it's easy. Amen? God called us to be soldiers. Every one of you, every, and, and I start to say every one of me, but that's okay. <clears throat> every one of us is going to face temptation. Maybe tonight. Tomorrow and this week and every week. 
The devil's going to do his best. You know what your weakness is. There's one other person besides God who knows, and that's the devil. I'm going to tell you something. He's got a whole legion of devils that do nothing but study you. They study you. They study me. They study this church. And if there's one single thing that we're weak in, he knows that, and that is where he's going to hit you. You're going to have to go through temptation. That's why it's so important that we continue, no matter what. I want to be a Christian. We're going to go through persecutions at times. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Not some, not most, all. Amen? Amen. We're going to go through some trials. We're going to go through our, our share of heartaches. We're all going to go through that. But the church of Jesus Christ is on its way to heaven. And I'm going to sit down, Brother Doyle Carlu, when we get there. I don't know, I may leave here tonight. I could beat him to heaven. But the way it looks, he's going to beat me there. I've got a, another pastor and some other people that a lot of preachers I know that's in heaven that I'm just going to get to sit down with. And praise God, we're just going to, just like on the boat, we're going to sit down and we're going to praise Jesus for a long, long, long time. That's good. Amen. Are you saved tonight? You giving your whole life to Jesus Christ? Is Jesus what it's all about? Or are you worried about your car and the hail? Do you know Jesus? And are you committed? And are you surrendered? I used to minister with a pastor and I would use that word committed. He'd say, no, 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 no. You don't use that word committed. Surrendered. It's a better word. Amen. Are you surrendered to Jesus Christ? Do you have victory? And are you letting God, listen to me, are you letting God change your life every day? Because that's what's going to take to be holy. Let's pray.